Okay. Hi. <clears throat> testing, testing, one, two, three. Testing, testing, one, two, three. Okay, so I've been trying to make this video for about two or three days now. Um, I'm on my day 14, uh, excuse me, day 15 post-op 360 lipo with a little BBL. I went to, I'm doing this video, getting straight to the point. I went to Chicago Liposuction that's located in Schaumburg, Illinois. Okay. Um, here's the inside of the brochure so you know what the logo looks like. Chicago Liposuction. Okay. Now, I want to tell you straightforward. I'm not trying to drag this on about all this in-between conversation. Straight to the point. When I looked up these people, when I was looking for a plastic surgeon in Illinois, because that's where I reside, I was not trying to be one of the sky bunnies. And I call those people who travel for surgery and then need to get back to my doctor. And you need to pay all that to get back to see that doctor. And most people just don't see that doctor again. I'm on my knees because like I just told you, I am um, two weeks post-op surgery. I had 360. And as you can see, I am not in my faha. Why am I not in my faha? Because this company, Chicago Liposuction, who is, uh, my doctor was Dr. Basil. And I'm going to um, pull that information for you here. <clears throat> my doctor was um, Dr. Basil. And here it is. Ooh, I should probably had the personal information. Dr. Basil, okay? And um, they give you, you know, the whole, uh, send your pictures in, and then we'll give you a, a uh, over the video or via pictures consultation. So they ask you your height and your weight and all that, and then you tell them. Now, what I will tell you is that they take high BMIs. So if you're 28, and they're telling you to lose weight and you 38 i think they go up to as high as 43 there you can go to chicago liposuction in schaumburg because dr basil will get you together um if you got a high bmi i had a high bmi for my height and weight and they still took me the reason why i'm making this video is because like i said in the beginning when i was doing my research on this um, facility itself via YouTube. I did not see one video for Chicago liposuction in Schaumburg. This man, Dr. Basil, uh, here's another that shows you where they located from. All my information, uh, comprehensive metabolic panel I had. Uh, let me see, complete name of doctor, kids, Faha, BBL pillows, boards, was surgery moved? I had to reschedule my surgery because of a personal situation. Um, I decided that I need medical clearance. They told me I did not need medical clearance. I thought that was weird because I'm getting ready to have something that I consider major surgery. I should be cleared for that. They said I didn't need blood work if I wasn't having general anesthesia. Let me tell you something. 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 Don't do this without general anesthesia. I don't care how much cheaper it is. L listen, this stuff hurts. They lie, okay? They numb you up with whatever that stuff is that they shoot in these little incisions right here. I don't want to go too far, but these little incisions, baby, this stuff right here, baby, I felt it every time he did like this, almost every time he did like this, I was hollering. You want to hear me holler? Oh, oh, please, please, gritting my teeth. You understand me? I asked these people before I went under, can I have general? Because my doctor, my PCP was proactive. He gave me blood work, EKG. All that, because he said right now in the medical field, you could be talking to somebody on the phone at a medical practice that is not in the medical field because they hiring whoever, wherever, from whatever 
because they need people in them offices because we still getting sick. But people is quitting. They quit because of COVID and all that stuff. So you could be talking to Susie who thinks she knows what she's talking about and then get to your appointment, uh, your scheduled surgery, and it's canceled because you didn't get your blood work. That's literally what my PCP told me. So he was proactive and did all that. But when I got there on 11-8, that was the date of my surgery, at 4 a.m. with Dr. B-A-Z-E-L-L-B-A-Z-E-L-L, Gregory, board certified, uh, studied in California, and then um, uh, studied in Illinois, went on to Beverly Hills, California, did his thing over there. And I guess he decided to come out here in the Midwest and make some coins because the brothers is already making the coins out there in plastic surgery land of California and Florida. So, uh, with that being said, my doctor was proactive and I immediately asked him when I came in that morning and said, I want general. I don't want local. I want general. I want to be knocked out. That lady, Teresa H., uh, she's a medical assistant there. That's who they push you off to um, after your surgery. You you talk to your surgeon the day of. And this seems to be something that I see across the board, no matter what uh, uh, surgery video I watch, any surgery video I watch, unless it's somebody's heart surgery or leg surgery or something like they see their doctor regularly because of it. If you get any elective surgery or something like that, you don't you don't meet the doctor. You don't see the doctor. The doctor just come in, do his job, and leave out, and the nurses and everybody else take care of you. That's really how that works. So the morning of, I told Teresa I wanted general. I didn't want local, and that I had blood work done. So let's make it happen. She told me, no, we can't do that because they're not here. I said, excuse me, what do you mean they're not here? We have to schedule that in with your surgery date. So if you wanted general, you would have needed to tell us ahead of time so that we can make plans for these people to be here on site and it would be extra. I didn't care about the extra. I cared about the fact that what you mean you ain't got these people here on site like regularly. They not paid to be here every day. No. So there is some issue there. We need to research as women What's the difference? Like, is the uh, uh, anesthesiologist, maybe they don't have an anesthesiologist that can do general. They don't want to pay them that money, but they want us to pay the extra, extra money because BBL's liposuction used to be way cheaper than this. It's now, uh, I want to say twice the amount. Um, So she told me no, and it was either go on here with the surgery or not. So I said, okay, forget it. I'm going to go ahead with the local surgery. I've been under local before. Not for this, but I've been under local before. So I'll go ahead and try it. Boom. Why am I pausing? Because local is a bunch of pills they give you to swallow. I don't know what kind of pills they are. I didn't ask no questions. They give you some pills to swallow. And I believe whatever is in those pills is what knocks you out locally, that that kind of numbs your senses, but you still awake, like your eyeballs move. Um, and then when they get you in that room, cause you got to get up and walk into that room. And uh, after, they, after the uh, doctor comes in and talks to you, he literally asks you like what you looking for. And you go ahead and tell him, when I tell you, you better have your stuff together. Because that brother only got five minutes to talk to you. He only got five minutes that he going to stand there and talk to you. Because he done already made up in his mind what he's going to do to your body by the time he walked through the door and looked at you. He done zoomed in and decided what all you need done. Forget what you want. So even though you tell this man what you want done, they already five minutes. Two seconds as soon as they walk through the door. Boom, boom, boom. What you want. Turn around. Mark you up. Mark you up. Mark you up. All right. The lady will be back in here. And you'll be in surgery. That's how that happened. He walked out after marking me up. I told him I just wanted to look natural. Now let me stand up. Because I'm still healing. Like I said, two weeks. Okay. My stomach was out here. Because COVID hit. 
And you know, I was eating up everything and anything. If they was driving it, dropping it off, I was picking it up at the door, baby. I was eating it. Okay, baby? We weren't going nowhere. We weren't going outside. We weren't doing nothing. We weren't moving. We was eating and laying down. Stop playing with me. I was 30 months pregnant, okay? I was like this, okay, before I went in there. I always had some backside. But I didn't have this curvature, like this, the, the plumpness that's here now, that prominent, that wasn't now. Now, let me turn forward and show you, okay? This is what I look like. I am a, a, a stretch mark person. I, I had a daughter, and um, unfortunately, my skin was stretch mark prone. I knew that before I got pregnant. However... Uh, when you get liposuction, I didn't just get lipo. I had the J plasma skin tightening. And this is where they come in and use some type of laser that heats up your skin. Okay. And it's meant to tighten it literally. So my results probably look better than some women who've had children and got liposuction mainly because I have my skin tightened. So, like, my skin feels like I have a sock on or a belt because my skin is has been shrink-wrapped to my muscle after he finished taking the fat out, basically. So, as I turn around, I want you to tell me if something pop out at you. Okay? Let me tell you what you just saw. That is what I've been researching and being told it's called a lipo burn okay this is called a lipo burn let me walk around my camera here and try to get a little closer i don't know if this is too close maybe you have to pause it or something this is called a chemical burn oh excuse me a lipo burn I don't know if it's from the uh, two ways that I saw, or three ways that I saw, but two ways, typical. A lipo burn, which really isn't a burn. It's because the doctor was so aggressive in this area with the cannula, or however you pronounce it. It's that long stick that they use to get the fat out, okay? So maybe he was a little too aggressive here, and days later, after the surgery, this shows up as a black spot, okay? Or my faha, which you clearly see I do not have on, and I'll explain why. Or my faha was either too tight and was irritating my skin and caused a burn. That's, again, it's not a burn like you put your hand on the fire and you burnt yourself. No, it's a chemical burn. It's, it's a burn from aggressive liposuction or friction rubbing up against your skin caused the irritation. In any case, it is considered a complication, okay? And it is also a complication that you are signing away as expecting, just like you signing away, if you should happen to die on the table, I probably can't say that. If you should happen to not get up off the table, when you sign this paperwork, you have signed that you understand all these different complications can happen. They don't go over this with you. It's your due diligence to read that welcome packet. <clears throat> On behalf of everyone here at Chicago Liposuction, congratulations and thank you for allowing our team the privilege of supporting you and achieving your goals. Our entire team is committed to making your experience as safe and rewarding as possible. You will find some pre and post instructions attached. Please begin reading through them. We will go over them with you in more detail during your pre-op appointment. In the meantime, if you have any questions, Please do not call, hesitate to call or text me at, uh, they'll get back to you when they can. It is a doctor's office. I'm not going to say that telephone number and all that. 
If I am in a consultation and unavailable to speak to you immediately, please ask for our center manager. So I'll be making that phone call later today. Uh, anyway, that was Miss Katie. And Miss Katie sends out the welcome packet and lets you know, you know, um, I ain't showing y'all nothing that's illegal. Boom. Pause it. Okay, that's who I spoke to. What I tell you, read that. Pause it. Read it. I keep up with my paperwork. Okay, this is what they send you in the welcome packet. You don't get the welcome packet until after you put your down payment down. And um, I'm not about to show y'all all that, but I'm going to get to this other page here that tell you after liposuction. <clears throat> Okay, now we at the aftercare part. This is the aftercare. Now, the aftercare, they tell you, um, you stay in your faha, all that. That's, that's, you, you'll learn that on your own if you go that far, okay? I'm not going to go into all the aftercare procedures. But what I will tell you is about, uh, the stuff that they want you to do, um, that... <laughs> You see this bag? This is a bag of all the drugs that I have to take. Pre-op, post-op. Now, some of these are suggestions. My doctor suggested that you take Arnica. Okay. Um, Let me go get that. Oh, excuse me. Okay, here is Arnica. This is supposed to help with bruises and swelling. You're supposed to start this two weeks before you start go to your surgery. I did. I did that. You can't have no Advil. You can't have no ibuprofen. You can't have nothing that thins out your blood. Okay, if it thins out your blood, you got to stop that 14 days ahead of time. Didn't I just say I wasn't going to tell y'all about all the stuff you need unless you're having the surgery? If you're having the surgery, you will find out this stuff. But I just want you to know, don't go in there thinking you just gonna lay on the table, get snatched and get off and you ain't got to do nothing. Baby, you got to swallow pills, okay? And that little black spot that you saw on my back, the lady that I was aligned with, Teresa H, she, I guess she wasn't looking at my skin tone good enough. You know, I'm a POC, a person of color. And that black spot, or show up a whole lot better on the lighter version of me. You understand? Okay. So she didn't notice that for a while. And when she finally did, she told me, um, take your faha off. Do not wear your faha. And what was happening was because of COVID, even though we out of COVID, so to speak, uh, worldwide, we all back outside. They're still doing COVID practices. So when you get off the table, they do not want you to come back to the office unless you've had a tummy tuck. Like, that's the only reason why you have to come back to the office. Outside of that, per the instructions, follow-up appointments and progress photos due to everything that is going on with COVID. But first, let me show it to you because I don't want y'all to think I'm lying. Okay? Okay? <clears throat> Due to everything that is going on with COVID right now, we are not seeing many patients in the office for follow-up appointments. Instead, for the first two weeks following your procedure, you will be receiving a link, which you do not. You have to be on top of that stuff yourself. I think that lady sent me a link like three times. The rest of the times, I just touched the old link and uploaded my photos. I didn't get, I didn't get no link or no text from them every day. That's a lie. Okay. After... Uh, uh, through text or emails. These links will prompt you to upload your photos to us every day for those two weeks after your procedure. Now, thankfully, even though she wasn't doing her or whoever wasn't doing their job to send that link every day, when I touch the old link, it will open to the correct day. So, for instance, the last time she sent me a link was this day number seven. And I remember that because I've been hitting day number seven every time to get to my next day. And I hit day number seven and it'll say day number 10 when I get to the website, which will be the correct day. Okay. So 
keep that in mind. They not keeping up with you. Once they take your money, they done with you. I'm dead serious. If they see anything out of the ordinary, they will give you a call directly to advise you to have moved forward. That's a lie. I had to call them and I told her something is not right. I need you to call me back. As much money as I paid for this procedure, I know y'all can schedule me an appointment to come into that office to be seen. If I hadn't done that, they wouldn't have never took care of this. All that lady told me to do was take off my faha for 48 hours. And mind you, she still ain't told me to put it back on and I'm at day 14. Okay. This may also result in asking you to come to the office to be seen in person. I got it via text message. But because I'm using my phone right now to record this video, I can't put that in there. But if I can get tech savvy enough to do a screenshot to show you that when I was in pain, she was at wrestling ma at a wrestling match for her son, that's the other part. I'm in pain, and they said you can call them 24 hours because they align you with somebody. I was aligned with Teresa H., okay? She's a nice person, but she shouldn't have to work 24-7. So if I'm calling you on a Saturday trying to tell you I'm in pain, I need help, and you're not responding, you can't hear me. She called me. She said, I'm sorry. Uh, she called me back. I'm at my son's wrestling match. She texted me because she couldn't hear me. We kept breaking up the signal. So she texted me. I'm at my son's wrestling match. I'll call you when I leave. I never got a call from her that day. As a matter of fact, my reply to her was, I understand. I said, okay, I'm, I understand. I never reached back out to her. You at a game. Why are you even answering the phone? Why are you on call? And if you on call, then you need to step away from your son's game and see what's wrong with me. Man, if you not on call and they just stretching the office workers thin, that's another problem. Take your money somewhere else. Don't go to Chicago liposuction. Okay. Um... <clears throat> Uh, they gave me in this in this welcome packet. There's a company called All Star Cat. I don't think they work with them anymore. And this in this packet, they got stuff in here, and people don't even work for them no more. They say they look forward to seeing me. Okay, this is what the welcome packet look like. Oh, that's so nice. That's so nice. Let me show you my deposit, just in case y'all think I'm lying. There's a receipt. You see the deposit. You see it. You see it, you see it, you see it. Okay, and then um, don't contact these people, assistant hands in this packet. They ain't worked with this company in two years. That was pre-COVID. So these people ain't even giving a damn, giving a care about finding somebody, helping you find somebody for your post-op care. They still got old stuff in the packet that they sent you. Okay, so remember I told you about Meet Dr. Basil? Meet Dr. Basil. Pause it. Mm-hmm. That's what they send you. Mm-hmm. I already looked them up on the website, uh, that website to see if he was board certified or not before I laid down on the table. So this didn't serve me no purpose. I already knew all this. Uh-huh. This ain't illegal. This is business. Just like I signed paperwork that said they could use my likeness and everything that they want for their uh plastic surgery company, so can I, okay? Now, this is what you get, the end. That lady told me um, to put, so I came into the office on the 18th. I told you, that was 10 days after my surgery. I need to sit on my knees a little bit. Okay, so I had my surgery 11-8. My appointment in office was 11-18, 10 days later. And she saw me, Teresa H, and she said, Wow, you need to be drained too. So apparently, oh Lord Jesus. Okay, after this, I'm done. I'm tired, y'all. Apparently, there was some fluid. There's still some fluid here built up that need to be drained. So she was like, I'm going to drain you. Instead of using a needle and injecting and put sucking out that liquid, she chose to go through the old incision because it was still kind of fresh. Like I said, it was the 18th. My surgery was on the 8th. And she numbed it up a little bit and went in there. And when she let that thing open, baby, when I tell you, it felt like I was urinating on myself. It felt like 
it was just, it was so warm, just running down my legs, just running, just running. And she was like, wow, I didn't know you had that much liquid in you. You was hiding that so well. Also, let me explain something to you. The reason why I have these on is not because I was told to put them on. I have to wear something around the house. I can't be naked, right? <coughs> and also, <coughs> mind you, I have to put this on my body now because they didn't catch the burn in time. This ain't even what I hear other doctors saying that they will use. They said that it's something that uh, they're supposed to be prescribing for me over the counter that I'm supposed to be putting on here. But whatever. So I'm supposed to, <clears throat> and I'm not going to do this right now because clearly I've been touching all this paperwork, but I'm just going to open this up and show it to, you know what I'm going to do? So I'm, even, I'm right in front of the kitchen. I mean, I'm right in front of the sink. You can wait. It's worth the wait. And then you can get a little view of how I look. Okay. Hands are clean. Paper towels over here. Okay, I'm doing this all for y'all and for myself because I wish I had seen this video somewhere else. Okay. Also, I need y'all to know my fingers are numb. On this hand, this hand has been numb ever since I got out of surgery. And they told me that's something that's normal. It's going to stop, but it hasn't yet. And it's uh, day 14 or something like that. This is what's inside of here. I am to take this, okay, and place, op open this, because it expands. And the reason why you see me doing it like this is because of the size of my wound. And that's what it is. It is a wound, okay? I need to put this across here. But I can't do this by myself. I have to literally go look in the mirror and get this on. So I'm finna go do this right now. Thank y'all for bearing with me this long, okay? I'm doing this for us. I'm doing this for me, for my future self, because I will never do this again to my body. And I'm doing this for the next woman who's deciding or thinking about doing it so she knows what she's going up against, even if she still goes and do it. That's the fastest I've ever gotten this thing on because I'm so finicky and I want to make sure that it's actually laying down because... <coughs> I can't lean up against anything. It will rub off. There's, it's nothing. It's like it's, it's adhesive because of whatever the gel is that's in that band aid, or and in, in, not a band aid, because you're not supposed to use any band aids. So to conclude this, because I am extremely tired. Okay, this is what it looks like now. This is what I have to wear. Now, I can put my faha on. And it will stay in place, believe it or not. Because I also use Desitin. Teresa H. told me to go get some Desitin because I told her I was having a hard time keeping this staying in place. So, I put some Desitin on it and then that sticky, this yellow thing. But today, I didn't put Desitin at all. I left my dry skin and just put this patch on. And it is called Zero Foam. Form, X-E-R-O-F-O-R-M. Guys and dolls, if you can see in my face from the beginning of this video to right now, you can tell how tired I am. You will be tired. You need help. You will not be eating regularly. You will be tired. You will need help. You will not be eating regularly. You will not be sleeping regularly. Okay? This is the Faha that I bought from uh, Chicago Liposuction. They sold that to me. The one I just showed you in the video. 
Again, my name is Bree. I went to see Chicago Liposuction on 11 8 I had an office visit 11 18 where they decided that was when they were going to treat my chemical uh, lipo burn. I don't know if it was his fault, too aggressive, trying to get every little bit of fat up out of there that he could, or if it's the burn from the J Plasma laser. At any rate, you now know who Chicago Liposuction is. You can now Google uh, YouTube Chicago Liposuction and Sean Bird. Uh, what do they call themselves? The body lift something. Chicago Liposuction body lift. Uh, here it is. I can see it now. Chicago, Chicago Liposuction by Lift Body Center. And when you look up Dr. Basil, he's going to come out of some place like Barrington or something like that. But they say he works out of all these offices. He works out of Schomburg. But for some reason, he comes up under Barrington a lot. So I don't know if this is side hustle or what. But bye, y'all. I'm tired. The end. Whew.